I want to talk to you about RF maths and wireless. Didn't we just do this? Yes, but Gunnar had a much bigger budget than me. Mine is the low budget version of calculating wireless airtime. So uh, my uh, muggles, right? People that don't understand the magic of Wi-Fi. My only link to magic and Wi-Fi is that my dad was actually called Merlin. So I am the son of Merlin. I, I like it. it. That was his real name. Really, really, yeah. yeah. So Wi-Fi can seem like magic. It can seem very, very magical. But we need to understand some basic premises of Wi-Fi. Okay? It's based on the CSMA CA, the listen before talk strategy. Um, you listen. Is anybody else talking? No. Okay, pick a random number. Count down. When the medium's free, you transmit. Nice and simple. Little traffic air control in the bottom here. That uh, the importance of coordination, right? Uh, and I love this little children's book, Share and Take Turns, which is basically our mantra in Wi-Fi, right? It's statistical. It uses the concepts of acknowledgements and retries. Uh, we use timers, spaces, and slots. It's contention-based. We have the concept of a random number. Pick a random number. So I'm connected to, 20, I'm connected to 48 megabits. Let's keep 48 megabits, keep it simple. Uh, my throughput is 24 megabits. Why is my throughput 24 megabits when I'm connected at 48 megabits? We always assume, as a very basic with wireless, with Wi-Fi, there's a 50% overhead. So I want to show you why, where that 50% overhead comes from. Okay. So you pick a random number from between zero and something called uh, hash max, which varies based on have you tried to send a retry or not. So this is one of my favorite things. You, you've got to fight for your right to transmit. It's called the BSD by algorithm. Keith, you, you always talk, call it the game, the DCF algorithm. We talked about it earlier. You don't just transmit. I need to, to say something. Well, I picked a random number of 15, so I'm counting 15 seconds, right? Nobody else is talking, but I have to wait before I transmit. And it's not 15 seconds, it's 15 slot times. So we have to dig deep and look at the maths. So this is the basic algorithm, uh, variations of the algorithm. Uh, ignore this one for now. Is the medium free? Yes. Have you waited? Something called a diffs. A diffs is an amount of time that you must wait. And the reason we specified as a diff, not as a single time, is because it's different based on whether it's 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. Have you waited a diffs? No. Then you've got to wait. Okay, go back around. Have you waited a diffs? Yes. Is your random number equal to zero? I haven't got a random number. Pick one. 12. Is it equal to zero? No, it's 12. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Somebody else comes along. Hello, I'm going to be talking for 137 microseconds. <laughs> You set your nav to 137 microseconds, you start counting down. You don't even bother doing anything. Why bother? He just told you he's going to be talking for the next 137 microseconds. Okay. That timer, little timer expires. Is the medium free? Yes. Have you waited a diff since the medium became free? No. So you've got to go back again. Is the nav equal to zero? Is the medium free? Have you waited a diff? Yes. Is your random number equal to zero? No, it was equal to five. Then we had to come back and start doing it all over again. So five, four, three, two, one. Eventually, is your nav equal to zero? Yes. Is the medium free? Yes. Have you waited a diff? Yes. Is your random number equal to zero? Yes. You may transmit. Okay. So I call it the DCF dance or the BC algorithm. You've got to fight for your right to transmit. Uh, we also have acknowledgements. When you transmit a frame, you have an acknowledgement to that frame. I refer to this as an atomic exchange. You do a transmit, you wait, a sifts, you get back an acknowledgement. If any part of that goes wrong, that transmission has failed. You don't know if your transmission failed or if the acknowledgement failed. It doesn't matter. It's an it's a atomic exchange. It's one entity. You just simply retransmit. So until you receive back a positive acknowledgement for a, for a unicast frame you've transmitted, there are block acknowledgements, we'll ignore them for now, but every unicast frame is acknowledged usually by an acknowledgement frame. Okay? And we start off picking a random number between 0 and 15. If we don't get a positive acknowledgement, we, it's a bit more mathematical, but this is, this is for muggles, remember? 
we double the number, we add one. We double the number, we add one. So every time we do another retry, we double the number, we add one. Double the number, we add one. You now pick a random number between zero and whatever the current version of this algorithm is. Okay? So that's the foundational rules we need to know. I've got about four minutes left, and we need to make sure we understand the concept. I know it's not the greatest diagram ever, but it's functional. <laughs> it's, if Lee Badman can draw things on, <laughs> I can draw them. It's functional, right? You get an IP packet, the IP packet comes down. That is what is known as an MSDU. You add eight bytes to it, the same eight bytes every single time. The IP packet plus the eight bytes is the MSDU. The MSDU is sent down to the next layer down, where you put a, a MAC header at the front, a MAC trailer at the back. That becomes an MPDU. That is sent down to the physical layer, where the physical layer of wireless does something that I don't believe any other networking system ever does. It adds a physical header to the frame. The physical header tells us lots of stuff about what's coming in the next frame. That becomes a PPDU. Okay? So now it's time for a spreadsheet. This is what I wanted to introduce you all to, and it's much, much simpler than the one we saw previously. Basically, I am going to release this eventually, but I'll tell you a little bit more. You can see down here that, let's say we send in 20 bytes. Okay, you transmit in 20 bytes. Here you see how long, how long it will take to transmit those 20 bytes at different speeds. That's 160 bits. That's the speed. How long does it take to send it in microseconds? Okay, so you basically take the IP payload, that's 20 bytes. You add uh, the eight bytes for the MSDU. Up here, I've done a very oversimplified. We're just assuming 30 bytes overhead for the frame. It's a data frame, okay? It has a cause field. Uh, it's a data frame. That makes it, that now magically makes it be 58 bytes. So to transmit a 20 byte IP packet, it's going to take you 58 bytes. For reasons that I'm more than happy to talk to you about later, you get another three added on for stuff. That makes it 61 bytes. Those 61 bytes, when transmitted at 24 megabits, for example, will take 20 microseconds. Now, you come down, there's different calculation for G and A, 2.4 gig and 5 gig. You've got to add on, there's the diffs, the diffs is different. Then you pick a random number. Now, I tried to make it so we got some little cleverness here. Uh, you, by changing, you can choose what quality of service you're changing, about ch choosing the quality of service, it slightly varies the AIFS value and you pick a number between zero and three if it's six, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's keep it as non-cause for now and keep it simple. You will pick a random number which will make you wait between zero and 135 microseconds. Your physical header has a cost as well. Your frame we just calculated as 20.33, so it will take between 68 and 208 microseconds to transmit a frame. Then you have a CIFS. Then you, there is no random number for the return in CIFS. The CIFS takes approximately 44, 42 microseconds. So the entire frame exchange can take between 121 to 256 microseconds. Yay, fantastic, right? Well, what happens if we up the data payload by a factor of 10? Let's now transmit 200 bytes. So if we transmit 200 bytes, that is going to take, obviously, 10 times as long. Well, no. That is the big surprise here. When you convert this to 200 bytes, okay, same calculation, it takes just slightly twice as long. Because it's not the actual transmission of the bytes that are the issue. Let's convert this to 2,000 bytes. Okay, obviously that's going to take a lot longer. No. Once you transmit the 20,000 bytes, oops, gone a bit mad there, and you transmit it at 866 megabits. Now, the maths are going a bit wrong here. This, this is more of an assumption. Okay, it's still, you're still having to pay this price of the beastie by algorithm. So let's say we transmit in one byte, the minimum possible. Okay, that gets sent in a minuscule amount of microseconds. But you still have to wait between 101 and 236 microseconds for the pick a random number, count down, where the diffs, stop, where the sifts, send an acknowledgement. 
14 seconds to spare, that's it. I will release this and play with it. A much, much simpler version of what we saw earlier. I do want to play with the one we saw earlier though, because that, that takes into account AX and AC. This is just very, very simple and basic. I'm done. Thank you.